Hello everyone and welcome to a project that I've had on the back burner for quite a while now. My first ever themed month of videos. Welcome to Mario Month. You get it? Because it's like May and Mario. The people who say Mario incorrectly is like Ma Mario. So it's like... We're going to start things off by talking about a game that is near and dear to basically all of our hearts, Super Mario 64. And what else can really be said about this classic? It shook the industry at its core back in the day, and personally speaking, it was quite magical my first time playing through. And even nowadays, the game is still pretty fu- That ain't Mario. That's- that's green Mario. Welcome to Super Mario 64 ROM Hacks. Now these ROM Hacks have a bit of an interesting history. While you would assume that modifying a three-dimensional game as opposed to two-dimensional would provide just a ton of super simple hacks that get a couple little things done, like changing Mario into green Mario for example, would be really the entirety of it? That's actually not the case. The earliest hack that I can remember that was actually super surprising was Super Mario 64 The Missing Stars in the far off year of 2009. Bowser, that long time bad guy, really does suck. Ah, good times. And I mean, hey, look at this! Totally new landscapes, a modified HUD, and totally new mechanics like a day-night cycle that provide different missions without needing to go through the classic star selection screen. There's only 38 stars in this adventure, but still, it was super cool to see at the time. After seeing so many hacks of Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario World, seeing someone put genuine effort that shows in a 3D game was awesome. It may not seem all that impressive now, but it set the framework for years in the future. And two recent major hacks show just how far this hacking scene has come. First up we have SM64 Star Road. Aw oh man, where to begin with this one? This hack is awesome. At its essence, well, it is a full-scale, 130-star adventure with completely new and fleshed-out worlds and a varied lineup of missions. The hub world is really nice, even holding a few secrets here and there. The soundtrack is filled with a bunch of remixes from games like Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country 2, and even Bomberman 64. And man, it's just a lot of fun. The level designs have a good blend of exploration and proper platforming, and with a camera that's actually pretty good, I know, contain your shock, if any hack in this video is considered must play, it's gonna be this one. I know I'm totally just getting ahead of myself here, but this is easily the best hack of Mario 64 yet. I even like the slightly changed colors of the plumber for some reason. It's not much, but it looks nice. And it even pulls off some really unheard of stuff, like if you get a game over, you actually get tossed into this little area that you must escape to get back to the adventure. Star Road ain't nothing to mess with, I could talk about this for 20 minutes, but let's move on. Now, not too long ago, we have a more conceptually advanced hack, Last Impact. And, uh, hmm. So, getting the good out of the way up front, there is plenty of brand new stuff that is exclusive to this hack. Like there is a fully playable file select screen, there's cutscenes, good Koopa almighty we have cutscenes, and no, your eyes are not fooling you, it's even in widescreen. It's actually super surreal playing Mario 64 this way. I mean you could play it in 4x3, but like, why? For the most part though, the adventure follows the same idea as Star Road. You have a bunch of new areas to explore with original missions to do. But the worlds are much larger, missions are more varied, and there's even a plethora of new power-ups. Yes, I am currently using the Flood right now. That's pretty cool. The space level also uses Meteor Herd's theme from Sonic Adventure 2, and I don't care what anybody says, I still love that soundtrack. There is a lot of really cool things going on in this hack. 
However, while all of this stuff is impressive, it's going for far more than it's really capable of. I get the feeling the hacker went for more of a look at this cool thing I added approach rather than a look at this fun thing I added approach. The game can be shockingly frustrating at times. And some of the missions are far too directionless, despite the addition of the cutscenes that introduce each of the missions. Like here's a perfect example, I just started a race with this mermaid, but I have absolutely no idea where she went. Could be that the camera was completely facing the opposite direction, and the game didn't tell me where she was going to go in the first place. Eventually, I did figure out where to go, but even once I passed this awful camera, I didn't have enough air. If only the game pointed me in the right direction of the frog suit, or even told me the thing existed in the first place, I'd have been fine. Now, this is not really a game-wide issue, but I still found myself more annoyed than I should have. I think I'm in a minority here since I think people actually really like this one, so Last Impact is definitely worth checking out simply based on its impressiveness, but for me, it is honestly way too frustrating for its own good. If you're gonna pick one, Star Road is the way to go. But see now, that is both sides of the timeline right there, the Genesis and the Modern, and there are also plenty of full-scale hacks that have been made on top of these. One example, Super Mario 64 Green Stars. Stop me if you've heard this before. We have a brand new hub world, new levels with different settings and a full range of missions, and a whopping total of 130 stars to collect. It's not as good as Star Road, but it's still awesome to see, and like this is why I love really good ROM hacks. You basically have the equivalent of a full game that blends familiar with new, and it is awesome. I may not be a fan of Last Impact, but I can at least appreciate and admire its existence. But finally, that is enough time spent raving. It's time to take a look at all of the other stuff that's thrown here somewhere in the middle. Well, wish me luck! First up, there's Thwomp's Easter Egg Hunt, and here you actually play as the Thwomp. It's, a, it's an interesting choice, I'll, I'll give them credit on that. Your job is to run around, or I guess hop around, all of the areas trying to find easter eggs, I guess? I mean, I think that's what I'm trying to do, but I, I don't know. It seems like a neat idea, but this is just absolute hell to control. You constantly need to jump and maintain momentum, and platforming on top of that is a near impossibility. There's also these weird, static Banjo-Kazooie models just thrown around randomly? I, I don't know, man. I, I played this for like 20 minutes and I didn't see a single egg. I'm pretty sure they're just a myth. If there's any Easter Egg Hunt that you want to go on, the better choice here is to play Goomba's Easter Egg Hunt. And by the grace of Miyamoto, look at him go. He can actually move. And the game looks a lot better too, the aesthetics definitely fit the Mario theme here, and the music is nice and energetic. This is what I'm talking about! The camera can be a bit annoying to work with, but it is still loads better than the last one. There's your typical Mario grasslands, a space area with lower gravity, and even a purely 2D area. Not enough Mario 64 hacks go for this type of thing. Um... This is the level select room from Glover? Why? By the time I got to the desert stage though, things started to get a bit unnecessarily tough for me, so I think it's time I tap out. And well, the Banjo-Kazooie models are here again for no real reason and I'm constantly questioning that. Woo! All right, fine. You know what? If we're gonna shove Banjo-Kazooie into our Mario games, let's go all out. Super Banjo-Kazooie 64. It's the levels from Banjo-Kazooie, but in Mario 64. That was, that was a simple enough explanation. Now, unfortunately, don't get too excited here. It's not as good as it sounds. The camera was clearly not built for levels like this. And honestly, the hack itself doesn't seem to be built for levels like this. It's a really great idea that's worth some time, and it only has 30 stars, so 
it's okay for what it is. Man, can you imagine Luigi and Bottles hanging out? That would be just the most perfect pair of nerds, and I would love to see that. And in fact, the same idea was even done for Banjo-Tooie's levels. Again, it doesn't really work out as well as I would like to, but it's at least really cool to look at, and some of the missions are legitimately fun. There's even an attempt to recreate the massive hub world of ILO Hags, and it actually kinda succeeds. And you know what, why not, let's go for the hat trick, Super Donkey Kong 64. And hey, I was actually ready to hate on this one too, but it actually has a bit more work put into it. Like this area here, that was used with Tiny Kong in the Source game, was actually properly recreated. That's cool. You can get power-ups by getting enough stars, there's even an area that transports you to different levels through Cranky's lab. Again, just like the Source game. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty refreshing moving through this game this quickly, considering the original moves at the pace of a sloth. Forget about a gorilla. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan of DK64, what of it? And if you want another hack where you get to play as an entirely different animal, look no further than Super Butterfly 64! It's beautiful. Now say what you will about the Wii U, but that console is home to Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, so it will always be worth owning. An awesome puzzle game starring the mushroom-capped hero, Cap'n Toad. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this, Captain Toad 64. Now this is only a proof of concept only having one level, but it's so cool. Unlike the actual Captain Toad, you can jump, but as you can see, doesn't really do much of anything. As a result, it is up to you to figure out how to get from one platform to another and get all of the treasure before collecting the big star. It's a Mario game where the main character traverses the world without jumping. I love it. And it is certainly a whole lot better than the other Toad hack I looked at last Halloween. No. No, no, no. No, 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 not again. No, not again, please, no! Please, no, no, not again! Actually, there is a similar hack that changes all of the textures into the monkey's face. You, ha you hackers are a bunch of sick people, you know that? Now, if you're familiar with Super Mario World hacking, the name Kaizo will either ring a bell or bring up war flashbacks. Some would argue that this style of hack really offers up a unique challenge. Others would argue that it's really, really bad level design. Think you know where I stand. But why do I bring this up now? I am glad you asked. Kaizo Mario 64. Ah, yes, the line of fire shooting through the pipe bit. Classic. Immediately, we're left with an interesting challenge. The door is blocked. Also fire. And there is a block pyramid just on the opposite side. Also fire. Now, if you're a veteran of Mario 64, you know that within that block pyramid is the respawn point. So what you have to do is die from the fire, so you spawn inside of the pyramid, you quickly talk to the pink bob bomb that's in there, and then you can open up the path and get inside the castle. Uh, off to a good start so far. Alright. Well, Alright, let's see what bob bomb Battlefield has in store. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Chain Chomp Battlefield. Let me guess. Uh-huh, yep, okay. There's copy and pasting Chain Chomps all over the place. Beautiful. I mean, it's not as hard to traverse as it may appear to be. It's just, I, it's a, it's confusing, really. Oh, and the warp spots have changed too. That, that's a challenge, right? Now I gotta play through the level like how Nintendo wanted me to. Oh, it's, it's a tough, that's a, that's a real Kaizo move there, guy. Haha. <laughs> Battlefield is just covered in chain jumps. What is what is the challenge here? Oh no, I can't possibly beat King Baba. Oh hey, look at that, I beat him. Cool. Ah, uh, all right. They can't possibly screw up the secret slide, can they? Ah yes, of course they can. I was foolish. At least a dozen attempts later, I finally made it. The star is just not gonna show up, is it? I hate Kaizo so much. 
we're just about done here. There's only one more hack to look at. It's titled Bowser's Dank Rave 60 Flow. Whew. I can like feel the sickness coming up. Oh, uh, this is a, a chiptune remix of My Heart Will Go On, the theme song from the Titanic. I am really gonna hate the next few minutes of my life, aren't I? Oh, 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 Rosalina? Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Oh, we're off to a good start. I mean, I could go inside the castle, but there's also a pipe that's been added to the area. Oh, did I win? <sighs> Why do I even bother? Clearly that was a mistake. Into the castle I go. Ah, yes, this party is quite dank. Thank you so much for asking. All right. All right. All right. All right. This guy, this guy's not gonna die, is he? I, uh, I guess I'll just off myself then? Oh, that's how you get to the next level. Got it. Uh, okay. Was that supposed to happen? I'm just gonna assume that I'm gonna keep dying now until the end of time now, aren't I? You know what? I'll admit, this is the dankest rave I've ever been to. Good. I quit. Super Mario 64 sucks! Stay tuned for more Merrier Month content. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a nap.